Hey everybody, so I'm in the experimental release of Unreal Engine 4.19 and I want to show you how to use vertex colors to designate materials in the new material layering system. Let's just jump right into it. We're going to go up to our editor preferences, go to general, experimental, scroll down until you find material layering enabled. You don't need to restart your editor or anything, it'll just work right now. Um, and then we're going to create some folders, so a new folder to store our materials. And let's just go into it and let's take a look at what we have now with our new material layers. What we're going to be using is a material layer blend, a material, and various material layers. Um, so first off we're going to start off with a material layer. We're just going to call this red layer and this is the material that's going to hold our red color. Um, all we need to do here is click on this set material attributes, hit the add button, it'll say missing, so hit your drop down over in the material attribute and save what you want it to be. Uh, right now we're just going to do a base color, all we're going to do is create a color that is solid red, so go ahead make that connect it into your base color. And that's all we need to do here. So click apply, click save, and keep it open or close it, whatever you want to do. So now we have a red layer, but we also need a green, a blue, and a black layer. So go ahead and duplicate this. Go ahead and make all of them at once. Then all we're going to do is go into each one of these and assign the appropriate color. Going into my blue layer. And then the black layer. Um, I'm going to make a new folder and throw all these in here, so I'm going to call this layer colors. Now what we need in materials and textures again. It's what we call a material layer blend. And we need one of these for each one of the colors that we did. So our first one is going to be a red blend. And let's just go into it right now. And then we're going to duplicate it eventually. You don't need to make any changes to these original ones. All we're going to do is add a node that's called a vertex color. And since this is the red layer blend, we're just going to take and drag this red input into the alpha. And that's all you need to do for this. So hit apply, make sure you're applying all of these, and you can just close out when you're done. Make duplicates of this for your green and your blue blend. Black is going to be our background color, so it doesn't really need a blend of its own. And when you go in here, when it's the green blend, just replace that red input with a green input. Click Apply. And for a blue input, do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and make another folder, call this Blends, and throw these three blends in there. Now we're going to create our parent material, so go ahead and just create a material like you normally would. We're going to call this parent vertex blend. Go in and edit this material. First thing you need to do is click this use material attributes button. So now your output is just one singular thing. We're going to search for material attribute layers. and I'm going to call this the layer stack. This is going to contain all of our color layers and uh, tell us what masks to use with each layer. We already created our color layers and blends for each one, so we can go right into our layer stack and over here where it says default layers, we're going to add a few layers. Three to be exact, because we have three colors, plus our background. So go ahead, open the background, choose your black layer, open up layer 1. I'm going to choose my red layer. 
and choose my red blend. Layer 2 is going to be my blue layer and my blue blend. And layer 3 is going to be my green layer and green blend. So now we have our layer stack built. We have this material complete. You can see it's green because green is our top layer here. It's going to come in handy later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that for now. And I'm going to add an object that we can see some vertex color variation on. This is just a subdivided cylinder so we can see where we paint our vertex colors. And go ahead and go back into your materials and on this parent vertex blend, I guess we can save all right now. Right click on that and create a material instance of that. Call this vertex layers. Now this is the actual material that we're going to apply to our object and for a good reason. Because now if we open this vertex layers instance you can be able to see that we have this new layer stack. If that isn't open, go ahead and click layer parameters. You'll be able to see our layer stack, which we named earlier, and that contains all of our layers that we made before. So you can see if we just click the little visibility icon on the green, we automatically have blue. If we hide the blue, we have the red. So it's working correctly for what we need to use it for. Um, go ahead and close this, and you can see our cylinder is green because that is the outermost color when these layers are stacked. But what we can do is go into our vertex paint, make sure all of our colors are turned on, hold shift so we're erasing, and go ahead and erase all of this. We can paint red first, and that'll show up right on the black because it's over the background then we can paint blue over both the red and the black and then we can paint green over everything so this is really simple and it took us a very short amount of time to set this up if you were to set this up on a normal material you'd have multiple lerps you'd have a very confusing system uh, to work out all of your layer coloring but right now we have everything set up and um, we can paint right on our model so the cool part here is we can assign any material to these colors uh, via our instance. Let's create a new material layer. I'm going to call this brick and I'm going to make a brick texture. Go inside of our brick. I have both a base color and a normal for this, so I'm choosing these in the drop down menu. We just drag our textures straight into this material. Hook up your base color hook up your normal, click apply, and we don't need to create a material layer blend for this specifically because we already created our blends um, for our green, our red, and our blue, so all we're going to do is use one of those colors to designate where the bricks go. Um, so now that this is created, go back into your vertex layers instance. Let's keep both of these open so you can see two at the same time. Um, let's go ahead and make our green layer bricks. So all you have to do is click the little drop down here, change it to brick. So you can see this is a really easy system to make some vertex color blends because you can just make one vertex color blend and then you can duplicate the system and replace any of the colors with any materials you want. I could have blue being a different kind of brick that might be painted and red might be like a damaged brick and uh, you just paint right on here. And then you could use the same system and replace your blends with uh, say tile or wood or anything that you need a variation of that you want a vertex color blend. And it could work just right like this. So just to show this again, uh, make maybe a little more sense, um, we can change our green layer back to green and let's make our blue layer brick. You can see it works exactly the same way. We can make multiple layers the same uh, material, so you could, if you wanted to, assign both of them to be brick. 
Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper and add some parameters in our blends so we have more control over how this blend works. Um, so I'm just going to start with this blue blend here. And what we're going to do is multiply this blend. Uh, go ahead and drag it into A, and drag that into the alpha. We're going to multiply it by a parameter. So right click on B and click promote to parameter. Then we're going to call this opacity. And we're going to make the default of this parameter 1. Click apply and go through to your other materials and do the same thing. So we have blue done. Um, we need green and red. So again, multiply. I'm pulling that up really quick by holding down M and double clicking. And then promote to parameter. We can call it the same thing as the other parameter because it's in a separate material. It doesn't override that first parameter that we made. Make sure that you set all the default values to 1. And finally, our red blend. Make sure you applied everything and go ahead and click save all at this point. Now what did we really do right here? Um, we made each material have a parameter that's opacity. So now when we make a new material instance off of our parent vertex blend, it'll include these changes. So we can go ahead and look at our new material instance that we just created. Um, and I'm going to apply this to our cylinder. And you can see nothing changed right now because we haven't changed any of the values in these parameters yet. But you can see if I go into our layer 3, which is green, and uh, click the little drop down by this blend asset, you can see that we have a scalar parameter. And what is it? It's what we made already. So click the little check box to make this active. And then its default value is 1. You can drag this down, and you can see that color fade. If you go into any of these parameters, you can blend these with their opacity. And they blend with whatever's underneath it. So you can see this blue turns into pinkish purple when it goes because it has a red layer underneath it. I hope this helps getting you started on the 4.19 material layering system. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with masks um, other than vertex blends. I just haven't seen anything covering uh, vertex blends using the new system yet. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope this helps you with any of your projects you're working on right now.